My name is Daniel Frost. I'm 16 years old. I feel most of my school issues started around fifth grade. I started like finding myself getting easily distracted in school, very um, unmo unmotivated and not, not willing to do stuff. I have Tourette's. It was hard, because like, when kids do notice them, like, sometimes I would make facial ones, or I'd have like, I'd make noises, like grunting noises, or like just arm things, or just like little twitches. They picked on me a lot. It's like, it didn't bother me, but I guess it does. Like, at the time, I just blew it off, or I told them to go F themselves, or along those lines, I kind of like played off like I didn't care, but it really affected me. Um, I mean, no one likes being picked on. Seventh grade, was where I started getting in more trouble. Um, I found my way into smoking cigarettes. Um, at a pretty young age, I got myself more detention suspensions, and it turned into like, refuse, like not going to class, just skipping class, doing what I wanted because I thought I could. I kind of have a joke with my family about um, how seventh and eighth grade, uh, I was only in there for probably a quarter out of both of them. Like eighth grade, I was there for a I think it was like 34 days out of eighth grade. Um, throughout this time, my mom and a lot of people tried getting me coded. Um, that was a hassle, definitely, through the school board and all that stuff. So, so I, never, I never was coded. I smoked a lot of weed growing up, young age too, 12, 13 years old, if not younger. Um, just smoking a lot, out of school, so no school. I could be working here and there, finding money, getting high, where am I supposed to be in school? I've been abused by my father a few times, mostly verbal, but a few physical occasions. The worst physical abuse I received from my father was on July 6th of 2009. So yeah, I confronted him about calling mom a cunt. Um, his response was, I don't care, I'm a grown ass man, I'll call your mother what I want. And I said, no you won't. My father leaned forward in the recliner and grabbed his beer. Took a sip, sat it down on the glass table. I stopped and looked at him and I was like, I don't remember what I said, it was something along the lines of, like, why won't you get it? This ain't your family, you don't belong here. You, don't, you wonder why we hate you. You wonder why we don't like coming home. I got up, threw his beer bottle across the living room. It smashed on the front door, shattered into pieces. Um, I remember standing up and walking towards the door to leave. I knew it wasn't gonna be good. As soon as I threw it, I got up and started walking pretty fast to the door. At this point, I heard their, their recliner, like, like someone got up out of it. So I looked back, the second I looked back, I remember my father, <sighs> I remember my father grabbing my left shoulder this one, and him cocking back and swinging. Um, his first punch grazed my lips. I tried, to, I tried to move, he had me by the shirt. I couldn't go. He punched me again in the right eye. Um, he ended up um, fracturing my orbital, which is the inner bone in here. Um, I later on went to the hospital that night. Um, it, was, it was definitely, definitely emotional. Um, I remember I remember covering my face, I mean, covering, screaming. Like, the pain wasn't bad at first, but it was. It was, um, it was obviously the physical pain, but it was a lot of emotions running through my head. Never, never really, like, never really still clicked in that my father just punched me. It wasn't like, it wasn't like, okay, I just got in a fight. I know that my father hit me. It was like, it was a blur. I wasn't, I wasn't sure what was going on. I was diagnosed with PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, after the incident, um, I found myself staying awake at night a lot, staying up at night a lot, not being able to sleep, no matter how messed up I was or how much sleep meds or meds they pumped with me. I couldn't sleep. Um, I would always, I always see that, the face of my father when I turned around before he swung. I tried to find a lot of ways to deal with the, um, the pain, the emotional, physical pain. Um, 
Um, I, I tried cutting. W wasn't really my thing. Um, never got never never relieved my pain or my stress. Um, so I've tried that, and like I couldn't couldn't really find anything besides using. Using was my way out, my way to feel normal. I got introduced to a friend, which I thought, which ended up being my drug dealer. Um, he got me very bad into the Oxycontins, Suboxins, the heavy drugs. Um, heroin, stuff like that. Um, I loved it, I loved the feeling, I loved the rush. Um, <clears throat> I ended up doing a lot, a lot of a lot of scumbag stuff, a lot of stuff that I shouldn't. I, um, I stole from my family. Um, I stole jewelry, stuff like that. I would rob people. I would manipulate my way to get money. No matter how I got it, I would get it. My high school got annoyed with me very fast with disrespectful. Not, and as I got older, the not caring and F you attitude got worse. December 15th, I overdosed. And I was on a lot of drugs, a lot of Suboxins, a lot of Oxycontin. Um, and then I, I remember I had the Clonopins on me. And then, I don't know, I don't remember why, but I ended up taking them. I took all of them. I ended up waking up that day, that night, to um, the doctors. And I remember a catheter being put in. It was, um, I wasn't sure. I was asleep, felt it, woke up, whatever, fell back asleep. And I remember, I remember my mom being there. Every time I woke up, she was in that chair right next to me. And um, every time I woke up, she was there. Next day, I woke up, she was there. Um, I, was, I was there for four or five days before I came here. It was, a lot of it was not knowing I was there. But um, it, my, my memories of the hospital was my mom being there. My mom was always there for me for my whole life. I feel like a lot of teachers gave up on me. Um, they, they did what most people did, just let him do what he wanted so we don't have to deal with him. That didn't help me at all. Um, at the time, I loved it, being able to do what I want, but now it made me harder and it made all things a lot harder. For me, I need a teacher not to be my friend, but to like kind of understand me. Um, to know where I'm coming from, to hear me, to, to joke with me, to um, just like be willing to go stay after the school and hang out or just be open and not just be like all about teaching, kind of joke around. A lot of hands-on things too. Hands-on stuff definitely works for me. It made me feel better when I heard a teacher be able to like repeat kind of what I said. like kind of be, all right, I understand you, this is how that, and stuff like that, like, just to know that they're listening. And not just, not just like, hear what they want to hear. Maybe to be, to be pulled aside, and um, spoke to one-on-one -on -one definitely helps, for me especially. Um, and maybe have a teacher step back from the role of being a teacher, kind of. I know for me, it's very hard to trust people. I've been here at YDC for eight and a half months. I've been here from December 18th to now. I found myself getting in trouble pretty quick, um, especially coming off the drug still, detoxing, in a place which wasn't so nice as the hospital. Um, I, got, I got in arguments a lot, especially with staff, got in altercations, had my restraints, um, definitely. Like being restrained for behavior, put to the ground, I don't call it. Um, I got my GED, which I'm very surprised about. Um, never, never had much school, much schooling. Lobby 17 on September 3rd. I leave September 2nd, the day before my birthday. Um, I'll still have contact with my family. I still love my family. I'm um, getting set up with a fire department, the Explorers program in Concord, New Hampshire. Um, kind of, I want to be a firefighter. It's been my dream growing up. I, um, I've got classes for CPR training, stuff like that, first aid, uh, at the end of September. So uh, by the end of September, I should be on my way to becoming a firefighter. I, I needed to be given a chance, I guess, like an honest, an honest chance.